Hello friends and welcome. In this video we are going to learn how to make use of one variable to represent one changing quantity. So imagine basically, you know, you walk into a cafe, you count 34 people one day, you walk into a cafe the next day, you count 24 people and so on. So the number of people inside a cafe, for example, when you visit a cafe over multiple days, the number of people changes. That is a good candidate for being represented with a variable. Let's take a look at that in action in C Sharp. So I'm beginning with a blank project, and as usual, we'll drag a label in. So type LAB into the search box, drag in and drop a label, right-click on the label and choose Properties, and then change the displayed text on the label from Label1 to Click Me, and then hit Enter, make sure it takes. Scroll down and let's change the name of the label in Code. So we'll rename it from label one to message label. There you go. And then click enter. So that's it here. And what we are going to do now is work in code the rest of the time. But as you can see, this label is kind of difficult to read. So let's scroll up and change the font also, as you might imagine. So change the value of the font property, the size, say to 36. Click OK. And because we'll produce a decent amount of output this time, drag this to the right and make it longer so it's nice and big there you go so this is our user interface at the next stage we write code in c sharp to make it do something so left double click on the label where it says click me left double click that brings up our code behind c sharp file all right first of all as usual i will remove these because as you can see they're not active so they're not needed i'll delete them and then move that up a little and I'll coll collapse this block right here. Now, private notice is blue, void is blue, object is blue. When things are blue, those are keywords. Keywords are words that have a special meaning to C-sharp, which usually means that you cannot use them as the name of a variable without generating an error. Let's take a look. So we're describing this situation. Imagine a cafe where the number of people changes say over a period of time that's familiar from everyday experience that's a good place to begin in other words i have a spelling thing installed let me check so cafe is fine so we are going to code this up in c sharp as follows let's ask a couple of questions when you look at people when you count people for example negative 10 people is that a sensible quantity no i have never in my entire life seen negative 10 people there you go is zero a possible count for people? And the answer is yes. You can have, for example, zero people inside a space. No people, in other words. And usually, you might have 20, 30 if it's a fairly big cafe. Beyond that, usually you don't have more than that. Okay, so you don't need to have a number like 100,000, for example. That usually, I've never seen a cafe taken with 100,000 people. So when I make these kinds of considerations what i'm trying to decide on is the correct data type so in c sharp there's something called u short that's a data type and if i right click on it and i go to peak definition this will give me additional useful detail on it so now i also want to use visual studio so when i look here i observe the minimum value is zero which is sensible you don't, for example, want to store a value of minus 50 for the number of people. And the maximum value is 65,535. That is more than enough to accommodate, you know, even of the biggest cafe. So I'm going to go with the U short data type. So fairly small and positive whole integer data type. That means the following. Numbers like, for example, 0, 10, but not... For example, 3, 4 point. In other words, in my entire life, I have never seen 4.567 people. There you go. In a cafe, for example. You usually count them. 1, 2, 3, 4. They're discrete. So U short. And then I will say number and then people. And I'm going to give a value of 34, for example. So imagine I walk in, I count, and I represent this in my C sharp code. So this simply, of course, tells number of people inside cafe 
to display this value, this is what we're going to type. You will say message label, access the text property of the label, and then I will write equals to assign that. Now, I want to include some text so that it's a little more descriptive than just printing 34 because then I have to ask what the hell does 34 mean? See? So I'm going to put a dollar symbol. That dollar symbol is used for string interpolation. It has nothing to do with money. And I'll explain that in a second. And I will say number of people. And I'm going to put a colon. And I'm going to put curly braces. Into the curly braces, you write the name of a variable whose value you want to print. So in our case, I will say number of people. And notice that variables once created show up in IntelliSense. So it's already available for me, you see? And now I'll terminate the statement with a semicolon. So let's, uh, let's emphasize this point as follows here. The dollar symbol is used for string interpolation, which is, again, a nice feature because variable names can be put directly into strings as long as you put them within curly braces like that. So let's run this and observe the effect. So just hit start. And it says click me, number of people 34. Okay, imagine we go in another day. We want to now obviously update that number because it changes. So to do that, let me close that. I don't need that panel. Next stage, so another observation will say number of people. So write the variable name again. And we are going to assign a new value. So write equals and then say maybe the next day there were 23 people. So assign updated value based on some observation in the world. There you go. It's important when you deal with the variables to understand the motivation for introducing a variable, which data type is correct and why. There you go. Let's change the spelling here. So observation. And again, we're going to display the updated value, but that is the same line of code as this one here. So control C and then control V down below. And I'll add a comment. Line below displays updated value. Let's run this and then we'll make a couple of corrections. And when I hit click me, it shows only the latest value. What if I want to show also the previous value of 34? We need to modify our code. So to do that, I will type the following. I will write plus equals. So let me comment what that means. Plus equals has the effect of building a long string from smaller ones. What do I mean? Well, this here is the first string. That is the second string. The plus equals has the effect of ensuring that both of these are visible on the screen, that they're built from smaller pieces. You build a bigger string so that both are visible. Take a look. Hit start and click me. And there you go, both are visible. There's one more flaw, which is that the second number of people is on the same line. We want to push it down to the next line. So to do that, I will put right here a slash with an N right there, slash N. And let's explain that. So what is the action of it? Slash N has the effect of creating a new line, which in other words means that this here will be printed on its own line. Let's take a look at that. I'm including a lot of comments, rich comments, to explain everything as clearly as I can think of explaining it. So hit start here. And hit click me. And now we have a good kind of output. Everything is clear over the two days, the two different numbers on two separate lines. Now, friends, when you are learning programming, because it can absolutely seem overwhelming, it is a language, a way of thinking, a way of seeing the world. You have to practice. That's absolutely essential. And as you practice, you have to do it very thoughtfully. And along the way, you have to ask the right kinds of questions that point you towards the correct solution. And that is it. So thank you so much, friends, and I'll see you in another video.